Pancreatic cancer is an aggressive form of cancer where cells within the pancreas change and start to grow out of control, forming a cancerous mass. While pancreatic cancer accounts for only three out of every 100 diagnosed cancer cases in the United States, or the ninth most common form of cancer, it's actually the fourth leading cause of cancer death, or seven out of every 100 cancer deaths. However, the incidence of pancreatic cancer is rising, and it's expected to be the second leading cause of cancer death in the United States in 2030. While it is split fairly evenly between male and female patients, it's slightly more common in men compared to women. Despite advances in surgical techniques, the five-year survival rate remains at seven to nine percent. However, research and knowledge about pancreatic cancer continues to increase with the hope of improving these numbers. At Parkview, our subspecialized GI oncology program offers nationally recognized multidisciplinary expertise innovative technology, surgery and endoscopic therapy, chemotherapy, radiation, clinical trials, and research to benefit patients with pancreatic cancer. We are uniquely able to offer the most comprehensive care across all disciplines in a way that optimizes patient outcomes beyond that of other large tertiary centers. The pancreas is a digestive organ located in the back of the upper abdomen behind the stomach and liver, it joins the first portion of the small intestine known as the duodenum through a duct that drains digestive fluid into the duodenum. There are five main regions of the pancreas, the head, the uncinate process, the neck, the body, and the tail. The pancreas has two functions. One is an exocrine organ where cells produce enzymes and the digestive fluids that are released through the pancreatic ducts and help break down food into useful nutrients that can be absorbed by the small intestine. Cancer much more commonly forms in the cells of the excrement portion of the pancreas. The second function is an endocrine organ where groups of endocrine cells known as islet cells produce important hormones such as insulin, glucagon, gastrin, and somatostatin. These hormones are released into the bloodstream and help regulate important functions throughout the body. Insulin, in particular, is very important in helping to regulate the uptake of blood sugar, or glucose, into the body's cells, so maintaining a healthy blood sugar level and fueling the body's cells. Cells within the pancreas grow to form lesions or abnormal changes that are benign or form lesions that are precancerous which will eventually develop into a cancerous tumor. There are several types of cancerous tumors that are derived from cells in the exocrine or endocrine portions of the pancreas. The most common form of pancreatic cancer grows from exocrine cells in the pancreatic ducts and acini or glands that produce digestive enzymes. This form of cancer is known as pancreatic adenocarcinoma. It accounts for about 95% of all pancreatic cancers. Other exocrine pancreatic cancers include cystic cancers, which are fluid-filled cancerous lesions, as well as several uncommon forms, such as squamous cell carcinoma and adenosquamous carcinoma, both derived from pancreatic duct cells. Signet ring cell carcinoma, a rare form of adenocarcinoma, ampullary carcinoma derived from the ampulla of Vater, and undifferentiated carcinoma. Endocrine cancers, also known as neuroendocrine cancers, account for about 5% of pancreatic cancers. Many of these tumors are benign, yet some are malignant. These develop from the islet cells or the associated nerve cells of the endocrine portion of the pancreas. These types of cancerous tumors include carcinoid tumors, gastrinomas, insulinomas, glucagonomas, somatostatinomas, and other rare cancers. While there's currently no known specific cause of pancreatic cancer, there are risk factors that increase the likelihood that pancreatic cancer may develop. These risk factors include smoking or tobacco use, obesity or being overweight, certain industrial chemical exposure, age, a person's risk goes up as they age, especially over 45, gender, Men are more likely than women to develop pancreatic cancer. Race, African Americans have a slightly increased risk as compared to whites. Family history, sometimes it appears to run in families. Inherited genetic syndromes, 
gene mutations passed from parent to child, diabetes, and chronic pancreatitis, which is lasting inflammation or swelling of the pancreas. Pancreatic cancer can grow for a while within the pancreas before causing any noticeable symptoms, which is why early pancreatic cancer often goes undetected. However, there are several symptoms that do occur with pancreatic cancer. These include jaundice, where the eyes and skin have a yellowish tint, the skin is itchy, and stools have a greasy appearance, all caused by the buildup of bilirubin. Bilirubin is part of the bile that is produced in the liver, but cannot be released when the common bile duct is blocked. Other symptoms are abdominal or back pain, bloating, weight loss and poor appetite, and nausea or vomiting. Though each of these symptoms can be caused by a variety of conditions, it is important to visit your doctor when any of these symptoms do occur. Because the pancreas is deep in the body, a growing pancreatic cancer tumor can be hard to detect at an early stage. There are also no early screening tests routinely recommended by doctors. However, after a doctor has completed a medical history and physical exam, and it is found that a person has a risk factor for developing pancreatic cancer, such as family history or a genetic syndrome, certain tests may be performed, such as a genetic test. For people with a strong family history, an MRI scan or magnetic resonance imaging, or an endoscopic ultrasound may be used to look at the pancreas. Endoscopic ultrasound is a minimally invasive procedure where an endoscope is introduced into the digestive tract through the mouth and placed into the duodenum next to the pancreas. Then, the ultrasound probe on the tip of the endoscope is used to make detailed pictures of the entire pancreas, ultimately looking for cancer. Research studies have shown that EUS, or endoscopic ultrasound, is able to detect cancer is not seen by MRI or CT scans. Therefore, some doctors have advocated for its use to screen for pancreatic cancer in high-risk patients. Parkview has unique expertise in endoscopic ultrasound, or EUS, through its interventional oncology and surgical endoscopy program. The program, known as IOSE, has nationally recognized experts in endoscopic technology and techniques who have pursued additional training in endoscopy. The program performs research and national training and utilizes technology that allows for early detection, more precise staging, and novel, minimally invasive treatments in pancreatic cancer. Other imaging techniques are used to look for pancreatic cancer are CT or CAT scans and PET scans. Once a cancer is discovered in the pancreas, various techniques can be used to biopsy the tissue to determine more accurately the type of tumor and its genetic composition. Endoscopic ultrasound with fine needle biopsy is used to view the cancer with ultrasound imaging while introducing a needle to take tissue sample of the tumor. The biopsy tissue is then sent to the laboratory for molecular testing with pathologic analysis, where special stains are applied to the tissue to help determine its tumor and disease characteristics. The laboratory analysis is used in combination with the interpretation of the EUS images and high resolution CT scans of the chest, abdomen, and pelvis. This allows the doctor to stage the cancer and determine the local blood vessel or vascular involvement, all of which dictate the cancer's management. At Parkview, and similarly at other high-volume pancreatic centers, a team of surgeons, medical oncologists, interventional endoscopists, pathologists, radiologists, and other physicians review every case individually and in detail. Analyzing all of the information, including involvement of lymph nodes and possible metastasis, or spread to other organs. This collaboration is crucial because sometimes findings are seen on EUS that are not seen on CT scans, and in certain cases, a PET scan may be needed to obtain additional diagnostic information. After, multiple specialists will agree upon a diagnostic stage and treatment plan. Ultimately, a complete removal, or R0 resection, is crucial to improving the outcome and survival of the patient. During the diagnosis of pancreatic cancer and after the diagnostic tests are performed and analyzed, the doctor will determine the stage of development that the cancer has reached. This is known as staging the cancer. Overall staging, which is similar for many cancers, is rated on a scale from zero to four, where zero means the cancer is within the organ, and one through four designates the amount the cancer has advanced and is spreading. 
Another staging scale used for pancreatic cancer is the TNM system, where three key pieces of information are determined. The T value for tumor, N value for lymph nodes, and the M value for metastasis or spreading to distant sites. Each letter will have a value applied to it, which will help determine the clinical stage of the cancer. This information will help the doctor determine how to personalize the patient's surveillance or continued observation and treatment. Survival rates give an indication of what percentage of people with cancer will be alive after a certain period of time, often two to five years, as compared to a person in the overall population. Five-year survival rates are classified for patients with localized cancer where no cancer has spread beyond the pancreas, regional metastatic cancer where the cancer has spread to regional lymph nodes, and distant metastatic cancer where the cancer has spread to distant organs. For localized cancer, the five-year survival rate is 34%. For regional cancer, it is 12%. For distant cancer, it is 3%. While the total overall five-year survival rate for pancreatic cancer is seven to nine percent. We are continuously adding new technologies and clinical trials to improve these odds at Parkview's GI Oncology program. After careful analysis of all of the data collected during the diagnostic stage and a full understanding of the unique characteristics of the individual patient, treatment options will be discussed with the patient and an individualized treatment plan will be developed. Importantly, precise staging is key for appropriate treatment and when possible, surgery is the treatment of choice. Surgery occurs when a trained pancreatic or oncologic surgeon removes the cancer, which is complex and requires a high degree of proficiency. Though the type of surgery is dependent upon the stage, the location of the cancer, and is typically not performed if the cancer has metastasized, as is the case of adenocarcinoma of the pancreas. Ideally, if the pancreatic cancer has not spread outside of the pancreas, the tumor can be completely removed. However, even after removal, the cancer can reoccur. Therefore, chemotherapy is advocated. And recently, as a result of data from research studies, giving chemotherapy before surgery has also been encouraged. Unfortunately, the vast majority of pancreatic cancers may not be able to be completely removed when discovered as a result of local involvement of major blood vessels, and therefore may require additional or alternative treatments. These treatment options may include chemotherapy, which is anti-cancer medicine given intravenously or as a pill that attacks cancer cells throughout the body, which can be given at various times during treatment. Targeted drug therapy, which is medicine that targets parts of the cancer more specifically than standard chemotherapy and can be used in association with chemotherapeutic medicine. Immunotherapy, which are medicines to help stimulate the body's immune system to attack the cancer cells. Radiation therapy, which uses high-energy x-rays that are focused on the cancer to reduce its size before or after surgery. Cyberknife, also called Stereotactic Radiation Therapy, or SBRT, is a high-intensity radiation therapy performed at Parkview Cancer Institute. Parkview has unique expertise in the endoscopic placement of physical markers around tumors and radiation oncology expertise in the delivery of this high-intensity radiation therapy. SBRT has the advantage of decreasing the total number of treatments and allowing for greater intensity per treatment to treat and reduce the size of tumors in the pancreas. Importantly, SBRT also has fewer side effects. Other treatment options include ablation therapy, which is a technique a doctor may use to destroy the cancer without removing it in order to reduce its size or reduce symptoms and pain control management, which are typically medicines or endoscopic procedures used to treat pain associated with pancreatic cancer growing and pushing on the nerves and causing severe pain. Additionally, blockages to the bile duct or small intestine may occur with pancreatic cancer. These can now be treated by minimally invasive endoscopic surgical techniques, such as the placement of stents and performing endoscopic bypass. These are technically challenging procedures but can provide relief with less morbidity and can also cause less delay to chemotherapy treatment for the patient. Depending upon the circumstances of the patient, these treatments can be performed before surgery, which is called neoadjuvant treatment. They can also be performed after surgery, which is called adjuvant treatment. Or they can be performed when the cancer is metastasized or surgery is not an option, which is called palliative treatment. 
Novel treatments and research trials are on the rise. These include endoscopic guided therapies to reduce tumor size and induce treatment response, as well as new chemotherapies and immunotherapies. Parkview Cancer Institute continues to investigate these treatments via its strong cancer research program. Parkview Cancer Institute is committed to innovative science and clinical research to effectively improve our ability to prevent, diagnose, and treat cancer. We have an array of ongoing clinical trials seeking qualified patients for enrollment. Please visit our website to find out specific information about clinical trials at Parkview. Please note that these are constantly changing and updated often. Therefore, a referral to the Parkview GI Oncology program is crucial so we can explore the best primary options and second opinions which are personalized to each patient. Pancreatic cancer is an increasingly prevalent form of cancer and at the Parkview Cancer Institute, one of the highest volume GI cancer centers in the Midwest, we are committed to excellence in pursuit of the best experience, outcomes, and care for every patient.